Welcome, I'm State Senator Suzanne Bonamici from District 17. We're here today to emphasize that the legislature must take action to protect homeowners before we go home. According to Realty Track, there were almost 1,400 trustee sales in Oregon just last month. Foreclosure is still a problem here in our state. And foreclosure doesn't just impact the family and the home. It impacts neighborhoods and entire communities. Last week, the Salem Statesman Journal editorial said that it would be unconscionable for the Oregon legislature to go home without dealing with the massive problems in the foreclosure industry. I agree. Two bills to address foreclosure are still pending here in the legislature. Both are bipartisan, co-sponsored by Senator Brian Boquist and Senator Alan Bates, and both are designed to stop preventable foreclosure. And Senator Boquist wanted me to assure everyone that he would be here today, but he is out serving his country and cannot be with us. Senate Bill 826 is modeled after rules passed by the Banking Commission in New York. Rules that were passed with little or no objection from the financial industry. It sets out best practices for loan servicers. Practices that will make sure that homeowners are treated fairly when dealing with their servicers. Senate Bill 826 is stuck in the Ways and Means Committee. Senate Bill 827 continues and strengthens the work that we did on the issue of foreclosure in 2009. The bill will improve the loan modification process by the use of standardized forms and notices. And the foreclosure process will be halted temporarily until a lender issues a decision on a loan modification request. This is an issue that we have been following here in the legislature. It's an important time for homeowners to find out if they are eligible for loan modification. This will help them get that decision. The bill will also give homeowners legal recourse under the state's primary, cons primary consumer protection law, the Unfair Trade Practices Act, if there is a violation. Senate Bill 827 is a bipartisan bill that's already passed the Senate with a bipartisan vote, and it is stuck in the House Rules Committee. The legislature must take action to protect homeowners before we go home. These are fair, good bills that will help honor, homeowners in foreclosure, and we're here today to emphasize the importance of getting those bills through before we go home at the end of the week. We hope <laughs> at the end of the week. So I, next I want to introduce Representative Frederick and Representative Kotek and give you the opportunity to hear from homeowners about some of the things that they are going through when faced with foreclosure. Thank you. I will be here. <laughs> Hi, my name's uh, Lou, Lou Frederick. I represent House District 43 in North and Northeast Portland. And I had a neighborhood association members come to me uh, several months ago to tell me that they were struggling with the fact that a foreclosed property was sitting in their neighborhood and they couldn't do anything about it. Squatters had moved in. The police were called. The police could not find out who, in fact, was responsible for that home. We sponsored three bills to address the problem of, of nu nuisance neglect of foreclosed properties this uh, session. Each of the bills has been blocked by leadership. House Bill 20, 2957 is the most comprehensive approach. It banned the neglect of foreclosed properties and required owners to provide contact information to local government. It was refused a hearing in the House Committee on General Government and Consumer Protection. House Bill 3639 was the second effort. After a public hearing explaining the problems to the House Rules Committee, we worked with stakeholders and to narrow down the bill, empowering cities to address the problem and, and providing clear communication. After all that work, we were refused the opportunity to bring the amendment before the committee. We introduced the amended version in House Bill 20, 2002. This only, required, this only required owners of foreclosed properties to provide contact information it was refused a public hearing. Now the problem in our communities is frankly real. These properties are not just eyesores, they are threats to public health and safety due to pump, uh, broken pipes, stagnant water, squatters, uh, crime of one form or another, drug, drug drops and, and other things. Cities can't find the entities responsible without updated uh, contact information and that's why statewide legislation is necessary. If we don't take action, municipalities will be left to make their own rules and that'll be a patchwork of enforcement around the state, which is bad for business and it still fails to protect the communities in a way that a, that a statewide policy would. It is a simple situation. Who owns the foreclosed properties? We, don't, we cannot find that out because of the MERS system 
primarily, that is a black box that doesn't give you the information about who is in fact the owner of a foreclosed property. And this is a problem for everyone. And that's what we were asking. We were asking very simply for a sign to be placed on the front door of every foreclosed property that said, if you have a problem, contact this number. That was not allowed to come forward. It needs to come forward. And it helps not only the, uh, the owners, uh, it not helps not only the neighbors, but it helps, frankly, the state and the communities. And this is something that we want to work on. So we're talking about both the what's happening protecting homeowners, but we also need to protect the rest of the state as well. Uh, Tina, you <coughs> I'm Representative Tina Kotek. I represent House District 44, uh, mostly North Portland, but parts of Northeast Portland, uh, middle income and low income neighborhoods who are also continuing to deal with the foreclosure crisis facing the state. Before the session started, I had a large town hall where I heard from people that were dealing with foreclosure, and I made a commitment to come here and work on those issues. I feel that we will have failed. Oregonians if we go home without protecting homeowners in foreclosure or from foreclosure, but also protecting our communities. I'd like to introduce two uh, individuals today who have been dealing with foreclosure. First person is David Jones. He's a constituent of my, excuse me, of mine from North Portland. He spent two years trying to get information from the Bank of America about whether he could get a loan modification. It took intervention from the Department of Justice and his case is still not resolved. And so um, David's going to tell his story, and then we'll hear from another individual after that. David? Thank you. Good morning. My name is David Jones. My situation is not uncommon. I think that throughout Oregon and throughout the nation that we've had some rough uh, economic times, and people have lost their income, and uh, that has caused them to fall behind on their mortgages. Such was my case. And when the government, the federal government, put out these home affordable uh, programs, I applied for them back in 2008. Uh, it took about six months of submitting uh, multiple years of tax returns and uh, stating my income to find out that I was not uh, qualified for making home affordable loan. I tried uh, again with an internal bank uh, modification. Uh, the bank said that they didn't receive the documents. Uh, I submitted them again. Uh, the bank said that uh, I had to get the documents notarized. I got them notarized and I sent them back. The bank told me that uh, the notarization was incorrect and that I didn't put my name down correctly. So the modification was denied. Uh, in 2010, the um, Oregon Home Stabilization in Initiative came through. Uh, it was a program that would help uh, homeowners who had lost their income uh, pay their mortgage for one year. Uh, I applied for that program through a lottery. I was accepted into the lottery. Uh, I still have not found out uh, whether that's going to work for me. The bank has contacted me most recently after my um, article came out in the uh, Oregon Business Journal and they said that they were handling it now at the vice president level and that they would uh, offer me another modification but I wouldn't be qualified for the home stabilization uh, initiative uh, to help me pay the mortgage. So I'm in a between a rock and a hard spot. I lost my uh, income, so I'm not low income, moderate income, I'm no income. So perhaps um, I'm going to have to forego my home. But as someone said, um, tell my personal story, it's more like tell everybody's story who's in my position. Uh, homes are people's uh, places they reside in. That's a sense of identity. When you lose your home, you lose your sense of identity. When you lose that sense of identity, you also lose that community, and you become um, placeless, uh, you become homeless, uh, and worst of all, uh, uh, you just feel real bad. And that's how I'm feeling today. Thank you. David's story is just one that I think many legislators have heard from over the last two years. And as stated earlier, we really, the legislature needs to go home, can't go home before we help our homeowners here in the state, like David. Senate Bill 827 would help him have a publicly documented record of his interactions with the Bank of America and would have helped the Department of Justice have full information about his case. Senate Bill 826 would ensure that the bank wasn't intentionally confusing and cheating his case. That's the kind of information we need to have. People need to be protecting the foreclosure process. Our next story is Tim Colette. He's a homeowner in Bend. 
He played by the rules of J.P. Morgan Chase's process and pursued loan modification. But now he's facing losing his home just weeks before his son returns from Iraq. Mr. Collette. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Collette. I'm from Bend, Oregon, one of the hardest hit areas in the state. Uh, I've been a contractor 38 years, and when I purchased my home, I didn't owe money to anybody other than the home. Uh, the banking industry, a lot of times, would try to portray us as people who were overextended, and we couldn't, could barely afford them, and when the dominoes fell, everything went. That may be the case for some, uh, but you got to ask the question, if, if they were so uh, unqualified, why did the banks make the loan? I and thousands of others were not in that position. I was able to make the payments uh, easily. And I did not go into fault until the bank told me to to try to get a modification, which is somewhat of a predatory uh, action. <clears throat> if the laws were in effect that we're trying to get passed, I wouldn't be here. This is extremely important for homeowners who are making their payments, who are on the edge, and they want to do something with the banks. Banks who uh, wrote so many bad loans that they should have went out of business and were bailed out by money from the government, which is basically we the people. Uh, I think a little appreciation would be in order from them, but we're not getting that. They're getting money from the one hand, they get their bonuses, and on the other hand they're taking our homes. That doesn't seem fair. I should be home taking care of my son's room, getting the boxes out of there that I thought I was packing up to move in, and get ready for his stay to come home from war. Instead, I'm on the phone with banks and lawyers and, uh, nowadays, reporters. Um, I've been uh, lucky enough to be a little bit in the media eye, so Bank of uh, the Chase is uh, starting to deal with me. Not everybody's that lucky, and we shouldn't have to be here. If we get these laws passed, people who purchased their homes with um, uh, plenty of money, I put $125,000 down on my house. There are a lot of people like that, and we never missed our payments until the bank told us to in order to qualify for a modification, and then eventually they told us we didn't qualify at all. But if it's too late, then, then you're in trouble. We need to get these laws passed because this is about people's lives. They're not houses, they're not, it's not money, it's people's lives. You can't make a decision if you're a small homeowner like, or a small business owner like myself and you're losing your home, it makes, a, it makes a, a difference in the decisions you make regarding your business. Small businesses are what usually start a turnaround for uh, recoveries. <coughs> if we can keep small business owners and other homeowners in their homes and they know that, the relief they get is tremendous and we can start turning this thing around and get this great nation back on track where it belongs. We ask for the support from the legislation to get these laws passed because this has to do with constituents and the constituents lives. Last time I checked banks are constituents. Our public figures are elected by the constituents and uh, we have faith in our legislation to get these things taken care of for homeowners who are badly in need of it. Thank you. And again David and Tim are, are just two stories but they really reflect the multitude of stories that we hear that are happening to to average Oregonians across the state who are dealing with foreclosure. And the bills we pass here in this building affect people's lives. Senate Bill 827 would help Tim by stopping the dual track of moving forward with foreclosure before the bank makes a decision on loan modification. And Senate Bill 826 would ensure that Chase Morgan couldn't misrepresent his options or misguide his actions and blame it on him for later in the process. So these are bills that really do affect people's lives. Um, I'm. I'm a member of the House Democratic Leadership Team. I have spoken continu continuously with my leadership about these bills. Um, I know the Democratic leadership supports these bills. I haven't gotten a good answer from anybody who opposes these bills why we can't move them forward. And as Tim has said, I think it's up to us as elected leaders, elected leaders to talk about the issues that affect Oregonians and get these bills passed before we leave this session. And with that, um, Senator Bonamici and Representative Frederick um, and homeowners who are here were open for questions. No work open for questions. I just want to say, uh, Suzanne Bonamici again, I just want to state that I have also uh, worked to try to get these bills, uh, a hearing to get them passed. I've spoken with every member of the House Rules Committee uh, to request that uh, Senate Bill 827 be scheduled for a hearing and work session uh, to no avail. And we're happy to answer questions. 
Western Vanamiki is 827, simply an extension of uh, the law that you wrote in 2009. It's, it's an extension, but it also strengthens the provisions of, of that bill. It was Senate Bill 628 from 2009. We made some minor changes to it in February of 2010, uh, but we've been watching how that's been implemented. And in fact, soon after that bill passed in 2009, uh, some of my colleagues said, good bill, but no teeth. So we we've have noticed that out uh, in our communities, uh, there, there has not been the teeth uh, needed to uh, encourage compliance with this law. So Senate Bill uh, 827 adds uh, some some strength to that, adds the teeth uh, by making a violation of the provisions, a violation of the Unlawful Trade Practices Act. So it, it strengthens it. It also is critical because Senate Bill 628, the work we did in 2009, is going to sunset in January. So if we can't get this legislation passed, not only are we uh, failing, we're, we're setting uh, homeowners back a step because they will lose the protections that we passed in 2009. So this is critical that we get, uh, get this passed. Yeah, for anyone, uh does 826, the other bill, have some kind of uh, financial implications? 826 has a, a fiscal impact on the Department of Consumer and Business Services, but it is a, a fiscal that would be paid by registration fees. So it wouldn't, uh, so it, it still has to go, fund. correct. It's not general fund, but it still it has to go through the Ways and Means process because there is a fiscal impact. Do you think there are any policy objections to the bill? Uh, there are pro members, uh, not necessarily interest groups. Oh, from members, I, I, there may be, but uh, I. Uh, of, of course, there would be op opposition from the United Financial Lobby uh, because they don't want uh, additional regulation. But I want to reiterate that 826 was modeled after rules that were passed in New York by the Banking Commission with, as I understand, very little objection. And in fact, we have uh, communication from somebody who was with the New York Banking Commission who said that some of the industry actually supports it because it, it is best practices for them and it levels the playing field. So that's where 826 came from, that uh, modeled after the New York rule that is, is uh, making a difference there in New York. If, if this legislature leaves without passing your, these bills, then essentially we would have no state rules after January 2nd? Of this well, year? We still have uh, rules dealing with the process of foreclosure. We still have statutes that set forth the foreclosure process, but we don't have consumer protections. We would be we would be uh, going back a step because the 2009 law sunsets in January. And on the bills that Representative Frederick was speaking to, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know he does about uh, for neglected foreclosed properties. We believe there should be a statewide solution on that issue and be very clear on how local uh, communities should deal with that. But if we walk away from this building without that bill, we will approach every municipality in this state to look at local ordinances to deal with this issue. It's a community safety issue. If we are going to have our housing market rebound, we need to take care of these neglected properties. And uh, we think a statewide solution makes the most sense. But if not, we will go city by city until we get this taken care of. Do you want to introduce the other? Sure. Um, Any questions for the homeowners? We have themselves? homeowners here as well. Who, Senator Bonamici again. We have homeowners here, some of whom have traveled uh, from various parts of the state. So if if you wouldn't mind, they would like to at least introduce themselves and say where they're from so you know uh, you can get a sense of how important this is to people across the state. Does anybody want to just say where you're from? name and city that'd be great thank you I'm Beth Peterson from Klamath Falls and I've been fighting with Bank of America for over two years trying to get a modification done and nothing had been accomplished until I filed a complaint with the Attorney General's office and the Department of Justice so but I'm still fighting and it just it shouldn't happen 
Hi, my name is Deborah Diana Sotis. I'm here um, from Salem. I've been fighting with Wells Fargo since February last year and have been through um, nothing but lies and deceit, programs that w were explained to me incorrectly um, over 20 different times of verification processes that I had to fax documents to. I'm still fighting. I didn't get any help until I contacted Ron Wyden's office and had one of his liaisons contact Wells Fargo. And now I'm on a, a three-month plan. Um, and in this three months, I have to um, have a job, have a final divorce decree, which is all pending. I don't know that that's going to happen. Like Mr. Colette back here, when I purchased my home back in 2006, I put over $100,000 down. I had a thriving business, and due to things beyond my control, having cancer, my husband walk out of me, and the economy fail in a personnel industry, I have found myself on uh, unemployment and dealing with the bank who has led me to put my house in foreclosure so they can help me with the modification that never happened. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Summer Ayers, and I'm also from Klamath Falls. I'm here <laughs> representing a friend who can't be here today because her home has just gone into foreclosure, and it's including her livelihood. Her beauty business was a part of her home. She's in cancer treatment today and couldn't be here. She's been fighting cancer for 12 years, and she's been fighting to keep her home for the last two years, and she has gone into foreclosure. She has talked to every congressman, every senator, every governor available to, to speak with her, and she's being forced to move out of her home. She doesn't know where she's going. She's a single mom who has never accepted public assistance. She's always worked, always had two, three jobs, and undergoing cancer survival for the last 12 years and she's almost ready to be on the street. In Klamath County there were 65 foreclosures in the month of May. 14 pages of foreclosures in the Herald and News. The biggest section of the newspaper now is filling, filling foreclosures. We need help for the people in Oregon. As a 20-year Air Force veteran, I am a homeowner as well. I've managed somehow to keep my, my head above water, but just barely. So thank you for all the help you can give us. My name is Phil Hilsinger, and uh, these people's stories sound a lot like mine, and I can relate a little bit to each and every one of them. Thank you. 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 Thank you.